Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Welcome Robbie Welcome to episode Ferguson. number 204 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, August the 16th. 2011. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble, back in the flesh. How are you? I am great. I'm yeah? Really good, yeah. It's so good to have you here. Good to be back. I miss yeah. you guys. Just, my summer hasn't been the same, you know? What have you been up to? Been busy working at a camp. Um, yeah. Thus the tan. And some of you were asking why I'm not wearing my goggles, but it's because I took them off so you guys could see my goggle tan because I wear my liquid image. Oh yeah, right, the everywhere. kind of raccooning. Yeah, yeah so I gotcha. That's why I'm not wearing them right I gotcha. Now. But yeah, I've been up north and it's just been great. It's been so much fun. Good, good. Yeah. Well, it's so nice to see you. We also have a special guest tonight. Uh, Space Fish is joining us uh, right there in, the, well, I think he is. He's, he's there somewhere. He's flying around in space. He's, <laughs> come on, Space Fish. Can I? There he oh, is. Oh, hey, Space Fish. Oh, God. He's shy. This is his first uh, his first television appearance, and so he's Fair he's a little enough. nervous. That is, uh, yeah. oh, that's Space Fish, and uh, and we do not yet have a name for Space Fish, and so I thought it'd be a fun opportunity for the viewers. Here's here's your challenge for this yes, week. Totally. If you would like some viewer points, name Space Fish. Oh, do it. Hello, Space Fish. Come back to he's us. Just shy. Yeah. No. Well, we'll see if he comes back. I was thinking because Space Fish is, of course, in space, <laughs> we could call him Bowie. Where is he? <laughs> I don't know if that's name, name's appropriate for our shy Bowie's head. in space. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, let's see what some of the viewers come up with, shall we? There he is. Aw, look at him. So you, you see Space Fish and you know what, uh, what he looks like and... and how he reacts to the uh, the space probe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions. Now, don't shout it out in the chat room. I see a couple of people, uh, of course, instantly. Uh, hey, he's a space <laughs> fish. Call him Jean-Luc. <laughs> Call him Data. Uh, but uh, don't shout it out in the chat room, because what's going to happen is there are 300 viewer points up for grabs. Wow. Now, the way this is going to work is like a lotto. So email live at category5.tv with your suggestion for Space Fish's name. And what I mean by it being like the lotto is that if two people provide the same name and that just happens to be the name that's selected, then that uh, 300 points is going to be divvied up between those two winners. Oh, I see. Okay? Gotcha. So, if, uh, so what you want to do is email your suggestion for Space Fish's name. And... Uh, I guess Bowie is taken. <laughs> Bowie's. I should give you points just for understanding the reference. That's true. Bowie's in space. Everybody's going to Google that now, and they're instantly going to know. It. No know Googling. It don't. Yes. <laughs> That's the thing these days. Eh? You listen to the radio, and you hear that slight pause during the contest. It's like, it's trivia, and you hear. Yeah, seriously. It's like. I'm guilty of that. That's yeah. Why. That's the way it is. <laughs> Nowadays, though, we can be a lot more cons in in inconspicuous. It's true. Because it's like, okay, I'm ready for trivia. <laughs> yeah. Bowie's in space. Here it is on Wikipedia. Done. Done. Easy. And you won. You won the contest. And you will win, just <laughs> like that. Easy. It's easy, people. Space oh. fish. He apparently likes the bottom of the tank more than the... Uh, oh, there he is. Aww. Flying through space. Go. Give us a name, live at Category5.tv, for your chance to win some points. Tonight, we are answering your viewer questions. Hillary has got uh, your emails up on her screen. She's got the chat room, and she is raring to go. Now, you, you, haven't, you haven't looked around without your goggles for a while, so it's got to be like when I take off my glasses. I'm feeling a little, like, eye strain right now, mm. but I think by the end of the show I'll be okay. <laughs> so send me your emails anyway. There you go, live at Category5.tv. In addition to our viewer questions tonight, uh, which you can get in in the chat room, you can get them in uh, by email, find out all the, the ways to get them to us on our website, Category5.tv. Um, what you can do is, oh, beyond that, we are going to be learning how to uh, actually create our own magazine covers. Cool. Very uh, excited about that. 
us with our tans, I think we're, we should yeah, yeah. we should grace the uh, cover of a Category Five magazine tonight. <laughs> let's uh, let's do it for sure. All right, All right, sounds good. But before we get too into things, I just want to give some big shout outs to our people from around the world. Now, you might not know this, but on our website there is a section under um, About Us viewer location map. I suggest you all go there right now because what you'll see are little little pin pricks indicating where people are around the world right now as we speak watching the show. And it's kind of rad because the thing about the internet is it brings people together. And we are all together watching this awesome fab show right now because of the internet. So check it out. And I would just like to give, you know, a few shout outs to the following cities in no particular order. Our viewer from Bordeaux, France, thanks for watching. That's totally fab. That's great. We love you. Thanks for being here. Kavala, Greece, you are awesome because who knew people watched Category 5 in Greece. Klepstad, Norway, our fan there, we thank you for watching and we're so glad you're here. And if you're in the chat room, say, hey, that's me, I'm from uh, Klepstad, Norway. Um, if you're watching from Calcutta, India, hey, that's awesome. That's thank so you. cool, yeah. Like, just everywhere around the world, people are watching. So check it out see just have a little look see and maybe just maybe your city or little town is on our map so it's kind of cool there are places in the middle of the ocean that are on that map what? with a little pin i'm gonna have to investigate and this. it's it's amazing and it's uh it it's so cool to see that many people <laughs> watching the show and and being able to kind of watch in real time if you sit there it'll actually pan around the map um it, as you said everybody go to it now but as that happens i think it'll probably end up slowing things down okay, so if like when i brought it up on the screen <laughs> the pins weren't showing up that's because it, it's live from the server and it can cause uh when there's you know during a live broadcast especially so so go back during the week okay do and that. check it out yeah. and that would be Fantastic. Groovy. Cool. What do you got coming up in the uh, in the news? Oh, Robbie, I'm so happy you asked. Because <laughs> coming up in the newsroom, Google plans to buy Motorola Mobility, which will have a huge impact on the smartphones industry landscape. Investors are pushing Nintendo to start making games for the iPhone. U.S. military scientists lost contact with an experimental aircraft that can travel 21,000 kilometers per hour. And Samsung's Galaxy Tab 10.1 may be available in Europe in spite of a German ruling against it. And mm. lastly, Jodie Foster, who played an astronomer in the movie Contact, has helped raise the money to reopen SETI, SETI. Hmm. Cool. That's kind of cool. So stick around because these stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. Yeah, I remember that they closed down. I think it was uh, earlier this year, before spring. I'm having mic difficulties uh -oh. here as the uh, cable slowly slides <laughs> down my back and I can feel it and it's pulling my mic up. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, I think I got it licked. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time tonight, I'd love to hear from you in the chat room. It's uh, Category 5 on Freenode. And, of course, if you've got the chat up now, just say hey and, uh, and where you're from. We'd love to say hello. Uh, and uh, let's see. I want to hop onto our website, Category5.tv. One of the cool things that you'll find there is that we actually have viewer awards. Ooh. If we go up to interact and viewer awards, you'll see that a lot of viewers are starting to, uh, to rake in those awards, and it's, uh, yeah. it's really exciting. So Gadwill was, of course, the first person to receive any award, uh, our first award being the Honor Medal. The Honor Medal is presented as an honorary medal to veteran viewers who have put an effort into being a part of the Category 5.TV community. So these cool. are viewers who are very active in the forums, who uh, participate in the show on a regular basis, who log into the website on a regular basis. Um, all that kind of stuff can increase your viewer points, people who send in images and things like that. So I want to just give a quick shout out to, uh, to those who uh, who are our honorary medal uh, recipients uh, up to this point, so up until August 16th, 2011. And uh, so just uh, want to give greets to Gadwill, of course, Bry Murray, Tordo, Jot, uh, AS759, or AS759, How Field. Great to have you uh, back joining us uh, after a, a bit of a sabbatical there. <laughs> Sprint Cowboy. Uh, How Field being uh, one of our veteran uh, viewers who has been watching for a long time. Uh, Sprint Cowboy. 
nice to have you here, and uh, nice to have you as an honor medal recipient. Uh, Val Pennon, and forgive me if I've said it wrong, but Val Pennon, uh, nice to have you here. Smitty Smith, congratulations on your big win of an honor medal. Victory! Yes, nice to have you here. Jawar, great to have you joining us, and uh, we really appreciate your uh, faithful viewership of the show and your participation in the community. Jebster, it's uh, it's great having you as a part of our community, and uh, it's it's uh, great to have you uh, having won an honor medal already. It's fantastic. Raptor two twenty two. I love his picture with a, a <laughs> carrot. That's brilliant. Fantastic, and it's uh, always a pleasure to have you joining us as part of our community. And of course, last but absolutely not least, mm-hmm. Pyrus rock this world. <laughs> Yay! It is. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, have you as a part of our community as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you would like to be a recipient of one of our online medals, <laughs> you, can. you can. All you have to do is participate in the show, join the, uh, join the, uh, the community uh, in an official capacity by simply registering on our website. It's absolutely free and it's a chance for you to not just interact with the community, but um, it just to, it's, it's fun. It, it really fun. is the, yeah, the added totally. value of, of <laughs> just signing up for the free service and, and knowing that when you log in, hey, boom, I got another 10 points, and those accumulate, and, and uh, you start getting things like, like honor medals, and, and there are some more medals that are going to be awarded, it uh, looks like, very soon with some of the viewers, uh, such as Bri Murray, who are uh, right up there uh, with high viewer points. Uh, and as well, I've, I've mentioned it before, but as more and more viewers uh, get up there with their viewer points, we're going to be awarding prizes, coupons, uh, some really cool stuff, some, some I call it value-added stuff that, uh, that makes it, uh, you know, it's a way of us being able to say, hey, thanks for being a part of our community and, yeah. and awarding those kinds of things. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about that. So congratulations, everybody, who's won so far uh-huh. uh, those awards. Viewer images of the week, mm-hmm. and we've got a we've really quickly got to get into some questions. Uh, I know that we've got lots of questions there, but we love images. But you know we what? It's all about the community tonight, totally. and we love you guys totally. uh, and gals. <laughs> Universal term, guys. Uh, <laughs> Invincible Mutant uh, says that mobile or mobile dot category five dot TV works fantastically cool. on the Samsung Galaxy 3, uh, which of course is powered by an Android uh, operating system, and, and there he is uh, oh, watching yeah. the show on, uh, on that device. Galaxy 3. Awesome. Very cool. Congratulations to you, Invincible Mutant. I will uh, throw 100 viewer points your way. Mm. Peter Lewis uh, joins us from the UK. And he's uh, got Category 5 working on the touchpad, too. And he stresses, Robbie, last week I sent in a question about the touchpad, too, and it's oh. Roman numerals II, and you kept saying touchpad 11. Oh. So for that, sir, I am sorry. We are sorry. Sometimes I make mistakes. It doesn't happen often, but occasionally And when it does, it does it's absolutely pointless, and, and it doesn't really matter. No, I'm just kidding. It's just to prove he's human, <laughs> that's all. It's a 2. So anyways, the Touchpad 2, uh, ever since last week's show, we were talking about the mobile website, mobile.category5.tv is where you want to go. And ever since tapping into that resource, Peter Lewis from the UK says, it's working absolutely perfectly. And here's his proof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just in case it's not enough to watch it on a tablet, you can bring it up on a CRT at the same time and watch the show with stereo echo not bad <laughs> not bad at all good demonstration however good peter i will uh, i'll throw 100 viewer points your way as well and don't forget you can win some viewer points by naming space fish space fish email live at category 5.tv i love that you just made up a jingle for space fish oh there's plenty more that Bo is <laughs> in space <laughs> oh my lanta oh, dear Okay. That being said. Category 5 Technology TV <laughs> is brought to you by Eco Alkaline Batteries. These things are fantastic. They're better for the environment than your average battery because they are eco-friendly. They have absolutely no mercury, no cadmium, and uh, lead-free. And these are considered landfill safe. EcoAlkalines.com. Do check them out, and uh, you can find out where they're available in your area right there. Or, of course, you can buy them right off of their website. Easy. They're no more expensive than your normal batteries. 
Wow, and awesome. they actually perform as well or better than the leading brands. Hello. And they're eco-friendly. Why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you? Save the earth and have longer lasting batteries. Come on, guys. <laughs> EcoAlkalines.com. Viewer questions. Oh, yeah. Oh, Let's yeah. hop right in. Dun, da, da, da. Okay. <laughs> Coming to us from Emil, wondering... Uh, Hey, Robbie and the gang. I'm changing my site from HTML to PHP and CSS. After a few pages, I found that a few pages needed another layout. So I added add first. I added AD first. Um, okay. Um, some extra lines to the CSS and changed the PHP page for that part. Now, um, I found that it made the CSS file very big, so I made a copy of the CSS file and then renamed it. Okay. I changed the header to .php and made um, also a copy of that and added the new CSS file. Now I have to change some locations in two CSS files to keep it the same, so I wanted to make it like this. The layout um, that is for all the pages is the same in one CSS file, and then for each page that has another layout for text and images is another CSS file with only okay. that info in it. Trying to follow. It's it's a long, it uh, kind of long, a, a long email. I'll I'll encourage you as you as you send us email. It's a good idea to kind of think think your thoughts through. Send us a summary of of the question itself, Emil. Uh, I'm going to do my best. Sure. Um, through that. So he sends us the link to the site that he's actually okay. working on, um, and then the site that will replace the other site. All right. So maybe you can. I'll I'll bounce my thoughts off of you as I I brought up my Bring email up. just so yeah, I can try yeah. to. Uh, just make sure that I understand, and you can let me know if I if I've got you right. And Emil, are you joining us in the chat room? I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so had an HTML site, just basic flat HTML. Have upgraded to the server side, so PHP, CSS, CSS being like the skinning mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, so because you needed another layout on some of those pages, but not all of them, you added more CSS code, but then it got too lengthy and became quite large. So you've broken it up into several. CSS files. Um, so looking at that pr from uh, an, an optimization standpoint, breaking up your CSS into multiple files, it's actually going to take less server resources if you just keep it in one file, unless you're only going to be feeding that, it on specific pages. There's a, there's a mechanism called minification. And uh, just do a quick Google search. Minification is the, is the method of taking your CSS, your JavaScript, and compressing it all down into a single file and that's the whole point is to get it one file as small as possible it's minified and it's distributed through a, a GZ compression to the browser and then the browser caches it and it becomes a much faster site because what happens here is you get bigger 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 CSS files you want to make sure that it's getting cached you want to make sure that it's getting um, loaded by the browser if it's a new version so you got to be careful because if it gets too large and you try to break it up and change it, and then it, it, it can get kind of complicated. But keep in mind, when, the, when a CSS file is loaded by the user's browser, it's going to cache by their browser. So it's only going to load that once if it's just the one file. If you break it up into several different files, and then you've got it on a different CSS file on each page, then every time you click a page, it's going to cache a new CSS file. So I hope that I'm making sense there. If it's just one file, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cache to the browser, and it's going to be nice, nice and zippy, and it's going to save you some bandwidth on your server. Uh, OK, so moving on in, in that. So that's just kind of a side thought. So you changed the files and made it so that it load the new CSS files. Um, the layout, you want it to change on a per page basis, which is fine. CSS is probably a good way to do that, and if you're using solely CSS to do that, if CSS is your is your mechanism of doing that, and you're actually using the same basic template, but the CSS is different, then that's that's good. Um, that means you're you're using CSS the way that it should be. Um, but um, how you want to switch back and forth between the two of them is is really. Uh, up to you as far as how that works. Let's see here. I'm going to just read on in the email here, Emil. Did Emil end up uh, joining us in the chat no, room? No, I've just been checking and he yeah, doesn't okay. appear to be here. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing my best, buddy, okay? <laughs> so pop me another email and summarize if, if, if I don't hit the nail on the head, which is quite <laughs> probable. <laughs> okay, so you want to add the CSS files to the header. That's the header include of the PHP. Very cool. 
um, then I can, uh, by changing only the PHP in the page, which layout I use. For sure. Okay, I think I'm following you. Okay, so. What do we do? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quickly bring up gedit, and I think what you're saying. Oh boy, where's gedit on this text editor? I've got Zorin OS, and they've simplified everything. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so here's your PHP file. Okay. So if you specify CSS file equals um, this css.php, whatever, right? Okay. And then include includes header.php. Just for example, okay? These may not be your files. Okay? So keeping in mind that now CSS file is a string that contains, oh, and I put .php, I meant CSS, uh, of course. So CSS file contains just the file name of the CSS file for this particular page. Okay, so then you go about your business and, and you know, your code is actually all through here. Okay, whatever it is. So in header.php now, where it says include your, your style sheet, you, where it says style.css, right? If it's in HTML, what you can do is now go equals, so that's echo, okay, dollar sign CSS file and then close the PHP. So now within those quotes where it did say style.css, you've now replaced it with whatever CSS file is. Keep in mind, if CSS file doesn't exist, it's gonna not have a CSS, right? So you should always set a default at the top of that page. We're just pretending that this is your header file, header.php say. At the top of that page, go if explanation mark means is not, is set, dollar sign CSS file, Okay, two brackets to close because this one belongs to this one. Okay, dollar sign CSS file equals my default dot CSS. Okay, end it with a semicolon to end this statement. So at the very top of the header dot PHP now, it says if CSS file has not been declared because it is not set. Okay then set a default, which is CSS file equals my default.css, or it might be style.css. So then that way, you're in fact not having to go through every single page and specify style.css, style.css, style.css. No, set that one as your default and then use overrides. So in the case of page number two and you want it to be my CSS file.css, you would just specify dollar sign CSS file as a, as a string that would because it's declared, it would be included as your CSS file. I hope that all makes sense, and I hope that helps, Emil. Cool. Beauty. Thanks for your question. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you will find us online, www.category5.tv. Cool, dudes. Yeah. All right, it's pressing onward and upward. Um, this is actually a little plug, a mm. little shout-out. Um, dear Robbie and gang, hoping you might wish to give me a plug. Um, Who's a from? Shout out Who's it from? from? Uh, Gadget Wisdom Guru. Oh, well, if it's from him. Then I guess we could. Go right ahead. Yeah, sorry. So, yes, everyone's favorite, GWG, GW, I can't even speak. <laughs> GWG? Yeah. Gwug. <laughs> Gwug. Anyways, um, his latest project, Android Buffet Live. We've taken small yet popular cool. podcasts on the Android Mobile OS Live with an audio-only broadcast on Ustream, broadcasting Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Time, I think. Um, anyways, we have the website, cool. which is androidbuffet.com. Yeah, and get over there yeah, for sure. check it out. There you go. We'll gladly plug this. The Android Buffet Podcast. Awesome. Now... Maybe. He makes mention of the Ustream link for uh, for the actual live broadcast. But what I'll say, Guru, is put a link up on your main website. Yeah. And then people can find it. Uh, so visit AndroidBuffet.com. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, yeah, you'll find it as Android Buffet on Ustream as well. There very you go. Cool. But uh, very cool. I hope that goes well for you, man. And uh, looking forward to, to seeing an episode. I, I can't wait to see one of the recordings. Unfortunately... Monday night, 10 o'clock. What, what show are you watching, Robbie? 
<laughs> at 10 o'clock on a Monday night. When I get up at 6 a.m. on a Tuesday and I work He's through until, until uh, <laughs> you know, I'm still, I'm still here. And I'll be here after the show doing the notes and the files. So it's a long day for me, Guru. I, unfortunately, will miss the live broadcast. Um, but uh, we'll have our revenge. Uh, you will watch a pre-recorded version of my show, and I will watch a pre-recorded version of your show. Fair is fair. How's that? Right? Yeah. That's a deal. <laughs> but thank you. Thanks, and good luck with that. that. That's yeah, I hope cool, it goes actually. well. And I hope you have fun. One of the tricks I found to doing broadcasting of this nature is you just keep plowing through. Yeah. I think the, the live nature of Category 5 and the live nature of what you're doing, Guru, is going to uh, really push you to become a better broadcaster. And that's not to say that you're not a great broadcaster. I'm just saying that's it's a platform for you to now uh, really uh, begin articulating as your thoughts on the fly. And that's a that's an, an amazing thing to be able to oh, for sure. to do. Definitely. And that's I, I found anyways with Category Five. I used to do. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but uh, Category Five actually started in 2005. We didn't actually broadcast our first live episode until 2007. Ooh, so for two years cool. we were creating videos that were going on YouTube and stuff. And you probably won't find them because they were under a different name. They were screencasts and things like that. But cool. so with those videos it was a little different. And so I have that experience of pre-recording using a script, doing that kind of yep. stuff, oh, and yeah. real, and then the post-production nightmare. <laughs> I think Popey will agree with me. I mean, because when the Ubuntu UK podcast was starting up, uh, and I suggest you also check them out, uh, Popey would, would attest that it was tough because they would sit down and they would record the whole thing and you'd do a couple takes of everything and then you'd have to edit it all down and create the actual audio and it becomes this massive task when it becomes live like this. There's no post-production. Yeah. If you don't believe me, watch live and then watch the recording after the fact. It's the same. It's the same thing. <laughs> if I, I have to be really careful, I don't burp. That would just be embarrassing. That's the beauty of live television. <laughs> you you don't know what's real. gonna happen. You just don't know. And yet I'm drinking Perrier today. It is carbonated. <laughs> you can see that. They can't see that. <laughs> I only drink Perrier at room I drink temperature. Perrier. It's on his rider. Yeah. <laughs> He's got these people. Perrier at No, I just came across it in the store and it's like flavored yeah, whatever, with Robbie. fruit juice. And whatever. It's, it's on your rider. I know the truth. Like I have a rider. <laughs> all I want is all I want is coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Pick out the red ones. He Somebody doesn't. else eat the red ones. I do. Sloppy <laughs> seconds. Hmm. Uh, celebrities, I tell ya. We're the worst bunch. <laughs> so prideful and arrogant. <laughs> Oh, sheesh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, what else you got? Um, well, it's pretty it's near... It's pretty near time for the news. I would say, yeah. I, I feel I understand. it's just news time. Is everybody ready for the news? To work our way into the news, space fish will float around the tank. Anytime you're ready. dun da 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 Google's $12.5 billion deal for Motorola's mobility business will hand Google substantial businesses that it has previously flirted with but never really committed to. Notably, the business of producing and selling its own hardware for smartphones and tablets and then designing and manufacturing of TV set-top boxes used by cable providers. Google's unexpected bid to buy Motorola Mobility intensifies its rivalry with Apple as both companies battle for the lucrative smartphone market. The acquisition, Google's biggest ever, marks a departure for the search company, which has always given its popular Android software to phone makers, but now will be able to build the devices itself. Even more crucial for Google, the Motorola purchase would give the company a giant trove of the most coveted commodity in the tech industry these days. Patent. As Motorola, Motorola, Motorola owns over 17,000 patents relating to wireless technologies. That will expand Google's patent holdings by more than eight times. Whoa. Wow. Crazy. That is substantial. <laughs> um, with Nintendo's sales plummeting, investors are urging the company to jump ship and partner with Apple in an effort to remain competitive. Nintendo, which gained mass popularity in the 80s, is staggering behind the video game industry due to overwhelming competition from Facebook and Apple iPhone. 
Nintendo president Satoru Awati um, is being urged by the brand's investors to partner with Apple in order to prevent the multinational corporation from losing market share to new competitors. Awati, um, the president, however, said he has no intention of producing Nintendo games for any products except its own. But with the underwhelming sales of the Nintendo 3DS, investors are encouraging Awadi to reconsider uh, his release strategy, which involves lowering prices of existing product offerings in order to attempt a comeback. Hmm. That sounds like dangerous ground to be on. Uh, I know. Like uh, investors would say, hey, get out. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Um, the U.S. military scientists have lost contact with an unnamed hypersonic experimental aircraft on its second test flight, officials have said. The Falcon Hypersonic Test Vehicle 2, HTV-2, successfully separated from its rocket, but lost contact shortly onto its glide phase. Space fish, what have you done? There it is. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Oh boy, the plane is designed to travel at Mach 20, or 20 times the speed of sound. The Falcon Project is part of the U.S. Defense Department's plans to develop a rapid strike weapon system. A hypersonic plane could potentially enable the U.S. military to hit targets anywhere in the world in under an hour. Wow. <sighs> so that's where our shuttle Crazy. program has gone. Got Lost it. in space. Understood. <laughs> The ban on the sale of Samsung's Galaxy Tab 10.1 across Europe has been temporarily lifted while a court looks at whether the original ruling was appropriate. The ban was brought in Germany, um, brought out in Germany following a patent dispute with Apple. It accused Samsung of slavishly copying the design of its iPad. But questions were raised over whether the Dusseldorf court had the right to instigate an EU an EU wide ban all across the European Union. Um, Apple is also facing accusations that the document that helped it gain the original injunction on sales of the Galaxy Tab in Europe appears to misrepresent the device's similarity to the iPad. A side-by-side -side comparison of the two tablets features a squash picture of the Galaxy Tab, making it look identical in size and shape. The Galaxy's Australian release has been delayed because of a similar lawsuit. Are these Apple guys supposed to know how to work with photo manipulation? Hey. Seriously. I'm not saying a word. Mm. Pressing onward. Telescopes looking for an extraterrestrial intelligence should reopen within a few weeks after donors replaced income loss in public funding cuts. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, S-E-T-I, uh, the Institute, had to shut the $30 million um, or $18.3 million, million pounds, million pounds, the Allen Telescope Array in April. So that stinks. So shut down. Donors include an actress you may know, Jodie Foster, um, who raised more than $200,000. The 42 radio telescopes in Northern California search for space um, potential signals from alien life forms. Hmm. Space fish. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ms. Foster was one of more than 2,400 people who contributed to the overall fund to save the Allen Telescope Array. She played the lead role as an astronomer looking for evidence of aliens in the 1997 film Contact. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Anyway, you can get these full stories online. Our website category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our fabulous community of viewers. If you have an incredible story you think is worthy of honor or mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. I know Invisible Mutant did, and we thank you for that. So from the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Hillary, thank you so much. No problem. The Category5 Technology TV newsroom tonight is brought to you by Pogoplug, cat5.tv slash Pogoplug, and Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. Have you ever wanted to grace the cover of a magazine? Um, yeah, I have. Well, there Not you go. Lie. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to grace the cover of a magazine? Now you can. Ooh. With the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Awesome. I hope that that was bassy enough. That was pretty bass. Pretty bass. <laughs> well, we're using this new console today. Not to get sidetracked, but Ooh. Music Pro sent this our way. Thanks, Music Pro. 10 input, 2 bus mixer. It's a Behringer. It's a Zenix 
1002B. And that's what we're broadcasting through tonight. Um, Sweet. And that's because all the all the craziness that we've gone through with the issues with the microphones <laughs> and all the swapping yeah, of wires. Yeah. And finally, we thought we had a good wire, and they, they we we and it broke the okay. mixer. It yeah. broke the mixer. I can't believe our that. phantom power supply blew out. Unbelievable. This is a phantom mic, as you know. So, anyways, so they said, okay, well, here, take this. We're gonna get the other one fixed up, and we'll figure it out. But so this is what we're using tonight. It's kind of nice. Beauty. We can it's kind of nice. To this. I think so. <laughs> I think uh, I will twit pick a picture of uh, what the uh, what the yeah. mixer actually looks like. Here we go. And for those who maybe don't know what a twit pick is, you should get on the Twitter. The Twitter. Just kidding. Twitter.com. <laughs> People are always like the Twitter, the Twitter machine. Yeah, and I hate to zoom in, but there is my Twitter handle so if you would like to uh, follow me on twitter this picture is just about to go up and make sure you follow robbie ferguson on twitter easy that's me now you'll know what we're talking about and you're gonna love some of the the ornament ornamentations here it's pretty 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 nice i'm thinking about the star trek <laughs> star trek there you go it's up check out twitter.com slash robbie ferguson yeah you don't see that I don't know what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah. Viewers will know. Viewers will know. You'll know when you know. Mm, you'll Check know. Check it out. When you follow me on Twitter. <laughs> there you go. Beauty. It'll also go up on our homepage, Category5.tv as well, mm. uh, because we have a TwitPick application on the left-hand side there. Sweet. There you go. All right. Perfect. So, I was saying magazine covers. Yes. My dream come true. To be on right a magazine. Wow. GNU Image Manipulation Program is a fabulous image editor that is absolutely free to download to use to install to yeah. share to send to your mom whatever <laughs> you want to do it's free for you okay g i m p dot org or gimp as some may say by my beer gadwill are you talking about my perrier at room perrier? temperature at room temperature green m ms um gimp yeah, there it is. Beauty. Beautiful. Go down uh, a ways down the page. This is gimp.org. Downloads for Unix, Windows, Mac OS X. It's free. Awesome. Go grab it. Okay. So now that you've got that installed, because that's literally how long it took. <laughs> let's get a let's get a picture. Uh, what we're gonna do. I've got a camera all set up and ready for us. We're going to get ourselves to, uh, to grace this wonderful magazine called Category 5. My dreams come true. Wonderful. It's what you've always wanted. It is. Being on Category 5 was one of my dreams. So and there it I is. Check that off. And now okay. magazine. It's a red letter day. It's a red letter day. Okay. So let's take a picture that this is, this is going to grace the, uh, the cover of I our do? magazine. I don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. Well, we're going to just have a picture taken. Here we go. You're kind of blocked by the, by the thing there. I wonder if we can... <laughs> it's okay. I'll just practice my face. This is like um, there we go. elementary school photo all over again <laughs> where I'm like, I don't know what to do. Okay. So we've got the nice backdrop that's going to do nicely on our, uh, on our magazine cover. This is the Category 5 magazine. Which I hear they're actually producing in the UK. Can we get a copy of that? If, if you know something about that, <laughs> pop me an email and let me know Seriously. what uh, what the deal is and what uh, what you need us to do. But here, we'll, we'll help you out by uh, creating a, a cover for you. Okay. So back to back, oh, okay. I think, is probably the way yes, to do this. All right. And, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big smiles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, camera. Yeah, big smile. Yeah. All right. This, this is gold, guys. There we go. Uh, what the? <laughs> okay, well, I'll share that one with you, but it w won't be it won't be the one for the magazine cover. <laughs> oh come on! I was like, yeah, big smile. Okay, yeah. okay, a true smile okay, for fine. our our wonderful all Category right. Five magazine. <laughs> Waiting, yeah, all right, beauty. Okay. Oh. That's not so bad. I, okay. I look like a bit of a dork. <laughs> this is what you're gonna run into. This is exactly what you're gonna oh, run into. No. 
this is, do you know what? The last one even has space fish in it, so that's good. I look stunned. Space fish. That won't do. <laughs> We're going to be here all night. Yep, yeah, exactly. This is what the show is all about. Okay. How's that one? It's good. Is that I, good for I our accept. cover? Okay. I accept. All right, so let's uh, let's get out of that. So we have our photo. After There's our a photo. link photo session, we are now ready to move on to the next stage. Thank you, uh, D-Man810, who makes a keen observation that uh, Robbie looks like a dork. Wait, he said never looks like a dork. Oh, did he say never? Yeah. Oh. No, that was a compliment. That's not true. <laughs> okay. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to grab this now that I've got that photo taken. Perfect. Okay. Let's see what we can do. So excited. Da, da, da. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So, pics. That'll be our last picture, I think, or one of the last pictures that we took. Let's see. Oh, no, not no, that that's one. Definitely I look not the one. Okay. I look stunned. That one you're stunned? Deliberately stunned. Okay. No, false. No. Is that the one? Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's the one now, winner, chicken dinner. With the GIMP, we're going to right click on the image and go open with. GIMP image editor. You're going to be able to do that in Windows, that whatever. That's easy. <laughs> can you right click on a Mac? I don't know. Actually, you can. I figured out how to do that. With the with your a mouse. Mac key? A mouse. Oh, you just I install a, a USB mouse? No, it's a wireless mouse thing. Oh. Not you that I'm out? promoting that. I'm not promoting anything. I'm indifferent. Yeah, Pressing you've never used a Mac. What are you talking about? Onward and upward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is my big debut in a magazine Here we go. type setting, and I'm so excited. I am getting it set up. Barely handle it. There's all we need image. is content. Once we get the cover, all we need is content. What are we going to write about? Well, that's up to the guys in the UK. I know. Absolutely. I wonder what they write. I have no they idea. Write, like our tweets or like all of my funny it's jokes. A, it's just a book about or our like, tweets. There you go. All my one-liners. Who knows? A magazine cover is generally going to be eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches high. True. Right? Very true. It's a, pa a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to crop out this image in such a way that it's going to work within that proportion. So I've created a marquee using the square marquee, the rectangular select tool. And you can resize that, move it around. And we want it to fit within the proportions of eight and a half by 11. So I'd say that's pretty close. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to go image crop to selection and then I'm going to go image scale image and let's see how much this is actually in pixel or in inches pardon me so 30 by 38 so now let's this is for print remember so let's do 300 hmm. uh, dpi pixels per inch or dots per inch at 300 that's your 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 normal quality for print. That's really generally what you want to be using. Now in this case our camera doesn't quite get us there to 300 dpi. The way that I can see that is that when I set it to 300 it's not 8.5 by 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly click the down arrow here and I'm going to bring this down until either the width reaches 8.5 or the height reaches 11. And you'll see this is set to inches. Okay, So I'm going down those are proportional. That's what this guy does. And decreasing the resolution until we get eight. And, there's eight and a half, and now we need to reach 11. There we go. Okay, so that's perfect. So we've got 8.643 by 11. Our resolution is 252, and we're going to change our interpolation to sync. That's going to just resize the image. We won't notice a difference because really the image is the same size. A little bit different but the resolution is, is ready for print. So now I'm going to switch back to what I've done is image canvas size. Okay. Now we're not doing image size. We're not resizing the image. We're resizing just the size of the image, not actually shrinking it down or we're only going to, we're going to crop basically. Mm. We're going to change the size of the, the canvas. Okay. So I'm going to unselect this chain link, which makes it so that it's proportional, because then if I change this to 8.5, then my 11 all of a sudden becomes 10. So that's no good. So what I want to do is I want to unlink that, and I want to go 8.5 by 11, okay? And then I hit center so that it centers the image within that 8.5 by 11. I go resize, and it's actually just cropped in those edges ever so slightly. You can see here 
it's like it's just a couple of pixels on the edge. Okay. Next up, what we're going to need is you're going to need a logo for your your magazine. In our case, we we've, we've got it made because uh, Krista made us a, a wonderful logo for uh, for the show. So I'm going to grab that off of our uh, our trusty that network. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to use the word mark here. So here we go. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to open it with the GIMP. Now observe the width of this image is, because it's a very high resolution, it's six, uh, 7,629 wide. Mm. Okay? So it's much wider than our image, which is 2142. So let's actually resize this logo. Remember, don't ever save over top of your master. What did I say that was? 2142. So this one, I want to make it a little bit less than that. So this is proportional. 21 Let's do 3.0. Okay, just so it's a little bit smaller than the actual size. Remember that it's sync. It's going to give us better interpolation, better quality. Okay, now I control A to highlight all, control C to put it in my clipboard, and then go back to this canvas, control V. And now it's part of that image, but I want to right click and go. That's weird how it centers. Layer. New layer. Now, in our layers pane, we have these two layers. Mm -hmm. One of them is our background, one of them is our word mark. Let's select our word mark. I'm going to go to the move uh, layer right here, move tool. I'm going to single click outside of the layer and then use the shift up arrow to move it up. Okay? And I'm going to put it right about there. Okay? Perfect. Now I'm going to turn off that layer. So now it looks like that. I'm going to select my background layer and I'm going to grab this lasso tool. Okay? We're going to zoom in on our image. I'm not going to do this using the computer zoom, uh, the screen zoom. Instead, I'm going to actually hit Shift Plus. I'm zooming way in on our image so that we get right in there so you can see all my acne. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay, now I'm going to enable the logo and I see that it comes down to about here on my head. So I'm going to disable it. I'm going to start just below where the logo begins, and I've single clicked. Now you see that marquee? It's created a line. I'm going to click, click, click on the shape of my head, and it's creating a nice marquee around my head. The thing that brought this up, as, you, as you'll see, is that we actually have some desktop wallpaper available that looks similar to a magazine cover, and viewers have been emailing and saying, hey, how do we, how do we actually do that? Can you do a tutorial? So here we go. So you see what I'm doing is I'm click, 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 so that I get this nice marquee, basically clicking there, click there, click there, click there, click there. Let's turn back on our logo. We don't need to go any further down. I'm going to grab this and go across to Hillary, where we're going to touch your hair there. Oh, you've got a stray one right there, just oh, so you know. So Maybe you could just fix that one. Oh, yeah. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh. Okay, now I'm not going to get too precise with the hair because we don't need to be that incredibly precise with it. Not with those flyaways, we don't. Not with those little ones, yeah. <laughs> you got. I, I have a few of those too, you just couldn't see them. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay, so see what I'm doing is I'm kind of going around it and making some little points and stuff to make it so that it looks like uh, I've traced around your hair nice. Okay, turn back on the logo, see where it is. See, I'm still in the logo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep going, keep going. There we go. I think we're probably out of the word mark now, outside of our logo. So let's turn it back on. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to go minus. Okay, be careful that you don't click somewhere where you're going to lose your marquee that you just created. I'm going to go. See where the, the word mark is? I'm going to click outside of that. I'm clicking on that, 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 and then I'm going to wrap it up at the side of my head. Now we've got this perfect marquee mm -hmm. that's going just around our heads. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the pasted layer, which is our logo. We're going to right-click 
and we're going to go add layer mask. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for those of you who aren't in HD tonight. Add layer mask. I'm doing this to the word mark layer, our logo. Okay, And it gives you some options as to how do you want to apply that layer mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to say selection, because that's what we've done. And we're going to go add, and watch what happens here instantaneously. It's created a mask, which is that shape around our logo. And so it looks like that. And now if I use the select tool to deselect, we've got that look uh, that you see on the oh, magazine cool. covers, right? So yeah, you're yeah. actually falling, the, the words are actually behind yeah, our heads yeah. as far as that goes. That's we can experiment a little bit with uh, the opacity of that layer. You can choose some different, you can maybe screen it or, you know, there may be an option that works better depending on your back background. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the layer mode. Depending on the background that, uh, that you have behind you, those will work either better or not so good. Grain merge to me looks pretty good because see what you get is you can actually see the drapes through the word mark and it looks a little bit like they're actually a part of yeah. the drapes. Okay. So there's the first bit of our magazine cover. Okay. Let's switch our logo back to normal. I want it to be pretty vibrant. I think it's even though I think that looks cool. I think for a magazine, we need it to be nice and bright. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sample the color of our word mark, which is that Doppler tool right there, color picker. I'm going to grab that green. And now you'll see that. Let's see. I'm gonna, I have to select my logo layer first, click the green, and you'll see that my foreground color is now that green. Okay. Change which layer I'm working with and create a black layer. I'm going to add some text. What should we say here? I'm going to actually drag the text area here. Robbie Ferguson and Hillary Rumble describe how easy it is to create <laughs> magazine covers in the free GNU image manipulation program. There you go. You don't have to use my wording exactly. You know, whatever you come up with. Increase my font size, see, because over here, remember we're working in very high resolution, so I'm going to bring that way up. And you see that text is starting to grow into that image there. There it is. Okay, see that? So now we're going to do what, the, what they do in the magazines. We're going to wrap around that. We're going to create a new layer. Now see, I've just created a marquee. Mm -hmm. Our marquee is going to be transparent. This is a new layer that's transparent, but I've already got a square there. I'm going to fill it with my background color, which, as we know, is the perfect match for the green in our logo. Yes. Reorder those two layers. And now I've got that text cool. right on top of that uh, green area. So drag that down a little bit. Oh. My zoom wants to center everything I do. There we go. Use your arrows to nudge when you have the uh, move tool selected. Use shift nudge to uh, move it really, really quickly. And you can see that we're starting to get a real nice look to our magazine cover. Any questions so <coughs> pardon me, so far in the chat room? Nothing Not yet, at all? Just a lot of discussion. Cool, cool. All right, now I want to move that down, but I, I want to move the text at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to link these layers. So I've cl clicked on the chain link here, the chain link here. So that's my text layer and my green bar layer. And now when I move that green bar, it's actually going to move the text at the same time. So oh. I can put that wherever I'd like to go. Okay. So we can do stuff like that. No problem. Now I'm going to grab a new color. It's going to be white. We're going to create new text. We'll put this down on the table. Don't miss this week's episode, or let's go, don't miss, episode 204, timely, see? 205 is next week's, right? No, 204, because oh, this, that's where we're actually doing the tutorial. So if anyone ever sees this I graphic, they'll say, saying. hmm, I can learn how to do this because it's oh, right there. Clever. There you go. And learn how it's done with free tools. 
Okay, shrink that font down a little bit. There we go. Nudge. And there we are. What do you think? I love it. Real quick nitty gritty. It's still awesome. You can, you can keep going and you can, uh, a lot of magazine covers are going to have text all around and they're going to have all different uh, information about the, the magazine. But uh, I think as a, as a quick run through using GNU image manipulation program, it. that gets you started. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us at www. <laughs> pardon me, category5.tv. Maybe I'll let you talk while I have a drink here. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so please check out our website. You can watch this episode and past episodes. Check us out, see what we're all about. If it's your first time, thanks for joining us. And please, please come back again. Join us in the chat room, too. There's lots of ways to get connected. We got the chat room. We got the website. We've got Twitter. Oh, the list just goes on and on. And now we have our magazine cover. There you go. You want to see one last trick? Yeah, I do. Just I to really take this to the next level? Bring it all. Just bring it all home. Okay. Real quickly. Square marquee. I'm going to go in about there. Okay? So I've got this marquee that is basically the center area of our image. I'm going to right click, go select, feather. This is a huge image. So let's feather it about uh, 500 pixels. Okay, because it's proportional. We're feathering out. It's it's 2,100 pixels wide, so that gives us a nice feathered edge. Now, right-click, select, invert. So now it's the edge. It's a frame that's that's now selected. Highlight your background layer. So that's the image. Create a new layer. Layer, new layer. Transparent. Select a color and make it black. And now go edit. Fill with your foreground color, which is the black. Okay. Oh. And now we start to see this kind of effect. So we're really coming out of the page now. Bring down the opacity of that layer a little bit. We don't mm -hmm. want it to be stark black. Yeah. But now, see what this see this see what this is doing? This is called a vignette. Ooh. And this has given us that real professional edge, that real professional touch to that image. And boom. Beauty. Okay. Real quick. Free tools. Absolutely free. Go download it. GIMP.org. Windows, Mac, Linux. It's Beauty. free. You have no excuse, sir or madam. None. None. Nothing. Go get it. Your kids will love it. <laughs> it's back to school time. They need free, free. software. Take what you can get. Image manipulation software mm -hmm. because kids love to be on magazine covers. I know I do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of just one kid. This kid right <laughs> here. Go. Yeah. All right. No, that's pretty sweet. Wow. I think you should. I think you should tweet that. The picture? Yeah. Yeah, we'll put it up on our website uh, and on TwitPic for yeah. sure after the show. Uh, you can download it if you like in high res. Put it as your uh, desktop background so you can look at us all day. There you go. It'd there be kind of like <laughs> square bars. And, and if it would then the next tutorial we're going to have to do is how to set your b desktop background not to stretch because we're exactly. both going to be like... We don't want to be wide. <laughs> the TV adds 10 pounds and we don't want it to oh. add 40, Okay. Well, yeah, how to properly scale an image to create a desktop background. I'm yeah, exactly, because I'm, I'm envisioning our next yeah. screen grabs uh, that, the, that the viewers are going to send in, and that's what it's going to look like. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I'll have a few too many hot dogs today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there my you go. goodness gracious. Hey, it's been fun having you here. Thanks. It's Thanks for blast. being here. I'm yeah. so glad I was able to come. Yeah, it's so great to see you. Back you're, you're back in town, and, and yeah. camp is done for the year, so... Yeah. So now so, what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking we should just kind of push in there that, hey, maybe you could come back again uh, very soon. And, oh, yeah. I'll uh, be nice around. to have you here. Fantastic. <laughs> you heard her, everybody. So I'm around. Yeah. I'll see you guys again. This isn't the last of me. You think you can get rid of me, but guess what? You can't. I'm still here. We can't. Whether you Even like when we not. got rid of her, she promised that she wouldn't be gotten rid of. I know. So. Tricked ya. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Although it's way past May. You've stopped in a few times, I know. I know. But we've missed I'm you like sorry. crazy. Well, good to have you back. It's good to be here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sticking it out, for sure. Of course. It's been a long wait. All right, gang. You have a fantastic week. Krista's going to be co-hosting next week. Uh, we'll be uh, welcome, welcoming her back after her vacation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday night. We have a lot of fun. And uh, check out our website, category5.tv. You're going to find out all about the new server, which is Parts Are On Order. We're very excited about that. Find out about it. Post your comments at category5.tv. Have a fantastic week. Bye, See everyone. you next week. See ya.